Do you know what the number one reason that my home wiring mastery approach is the best way to become a weekend wiring warrior? It's because I believe you need to have knowledge of the bigger picture. Anyone can follow simple step-by-step -step instructions, connect white wire here, black wire there, but knowing why takes your skills to a whole new level. A lot of novice DIYers will take on simple home wiring projects or repairs, but they shy away from doing anything related to the breaker box or the main service panel. But that's the heart of the system. To ignore that would be like replacing your bathroom sink without knowing where the stop valve is or the main water valve is located. But before I take you into the belly of the beast, let's recap what I covered in the last two videos. I told you why getting your electrical advice from an outdated how-to book or a YouTube video produced by Harry the Handyman isn't the best way to learn how to deal with a home electrical repair or a project. In the second video, we jumped right in and showed you how quickly you can start putting the skills learned in my home wiring mastery approach into practical use. I demonstrated the replacing of a faulty switch. So in case you haven't watched those first two videos yet, make sure you do that right now because we covered a lot of important things and I don't want you to miss out on them. So now let's get right into the heart of the home's electrical system and show you what's inside that mysterious box. I call it the belly of the beast. So let's get right into it and open up the main service panel and see what most people are so afraid of. So here we are at the main service entrance panel. It's a main load center with a main. This is inside my home here. This is, particular home is a park model, so it's only a 50 amp two pole main breaker. These are all the branch circuit breakers. As you can see, they chose not to use the label of the panel schedule and they've just labeled them right beside each breaker, which I kind of like better anyway, because then you're not always cross-referencing. This is number 23A, and then you have to look at your panel cover to see which is 23A. This is just straightforward. Here's your furnace, counter plugs, counter plugs, fridge, outside GFI, living room receptacles, etc. You've also got labeling on here, the panel identifier, and uh, the product number and your approval stickers, Inter, Intertech and uh, CSA, et cetera, all these stickers are on, showing that it's approved by all the uh, electrical authorities and the uh, approval agencies. So we're gonna open up the panel cover. What I'm gonna do is just, just to be extra safe, we're gonna shut off the main breaker when I open up this panel, just to show you how to work safely around this stuff and and uh, then we'll turn it back on after I'm sure everything's fine and we'll do some testing with the meter. But right now, I'm going to arrange for some battery operated lighting. I'm going to shut off that main breaker and we're going to show you how this panel looks inside and uh, identify all the components. So here's a close up of the branch circuit compartment cover removed. Now, he below here, this is the main breaker. This is a park model, 50 amp, two pole is the main breaker. It's off. Below here is still live on the main lugs coming into this breaker. And above here, it's all no power to it right now with that main breaker off. So we'll focus on that main compartment after, but right now we're looking at the branch circuit compartment and all the components within it. So inside here, we have bare ground wires. And you see the bare ground wires are connected to a bus bar that's actually screwed right to the panel tub itself, the frame of the panel, metal. So all these bare ground wires are connected directly to the bare ground lugs. And that bonds the panel or earths the panel tub itself. On this side, we have neutral lugs going up and down both sides of the panel here. And you can see connected by this bus bar over the top and down the other side. So that's where you connect all your white wires. Now, bare wires or green wires are grounding conductors or earthing conductors. White wires are grounded conductors. They stay separate from this point forward. I'll explain how the bonding works in the main compartment. So you've got grounding conductors, grounded conductors are the white ones, and then all your live circuit feeds come off of the breaker terminals. Now all these breakers, we've got a lot of 15 amp breakers and 20 amp breakers and arc fault and arc fault ground fault combination breakers in here as well. And these breakers now clip on to these hot bus bars. Now, as you see here, these are separate. This side is connected to one line of the main breaker coming in, and this side is connected to the other side of the main breaker coming in. And that breaker is pulled together, barred together, so you can't shut one off without shutting the other off. But notice how they alternate. So up here, 
You're picking off a bus bar from this side and then this side and this side and this side, alternating all the way down. So when you've got a single pole breaker, it just picks up one of the lines coming in. Could be this side, could be that side as they go down. But when you've got a two pole 20 amp breaker, then they pick up both sides of the, of the panel and you get 240 volts across the two poles of the breaker. Now, in this panel, we don't have any 220 volt components because uh, we have a gas range is only 120 volt. And we also have a washer dryer combo unit that is only single pole as well, single pole 20 amps. So typically in a home, you would have a range breaker that's a 40 amp two pole and you would have a dryer breaker that's a 30 amp two pole. We have none in here, but they would be double wide and they would pick up, they'd be as wide as two of these put together and they would pick up both those poles on each side of the panel. They can't be mounted any other way other than that they're picking up one side and the other on a two pole breaker. So that's critical to know. There were panels back in the day that, that could you could possibly mount a two pole breaker in a tandem wafer breaker and you could put it on one phase and you wouldn't have, you would only have zero volts between the two poles. So just an interesting side note there. So there you have it, the main parts of the branch circuit panel. The grounding conductors, the earth conductors go on the panel tub lug. The neutral grounded conductors go on the neutral lugs, isolated from the ground. And the hot wires get connected to the breakers, which pick up their power from those bus bars that you see. All right, so now we've taken a deep dive into the belly of the beast. I guess this would be the brains of the operation. This is the main breaker compartment that we've opened up. Now, as I mentioned, when you shut this off, I've turned it back on now because I see that everything is safe and I want to do some testing for you with my meter. So turn the main breaker back on, but with it off, you're still live to these two conductors here. The red and black are hot all the way from the meter, or in this case, the main breaker, which is often another utility shack. So this is live right to here, even when you shut off that main breaker. All it does is takes the power off of the branch circuit compartment. So you're safe in the top half when you've got that breaker off. Now we're opened up though, we're exposed. We have all this is live now because I turned the breaker back on. So let's explain what we got going on in here. This is fed by SOW cable from the main breaker shack that uh, feeds a, a few park models all in a row. So what we have here is the ground wire coming in. You can see it connected to the panel tub. We've got our neutral conductor connected to the neutral bar. So that's the grounded conductor coming in. And then we've got our two hots, 120 on the red, 120 on the black. And between the two, we have 240 volts. Remember, this you should never really work on the main compartment. I'm just trying to explain to you how things work and where you are safe in the branch circuit compartment with that breaker off. So. Uh, as I ex explained before, or maybe not, I haven't explained that the main breaker in any service is the only place that the ground and the neutral can be one. Now, if you can see back in here, we've got a bonding strap. That bonding strap is where it would be screwed right to the tub of the panel, and that would connect the neutral bar with the panel tub and the ground so that they're all one in one location, and the one location only is the main breaker. Now, because this is basically a subservice, the main breaker, as I said, is in a shack. So here you have to remove that bonding jumper. You can see it's pulled away from the panel tub and they're isolated. Neutral and ground are isolated here and they'll be bonded together at the main breaker that feeds this pedestal. Now let's get my meter and do some testing for you. Okay, so inside the main breaker compartment, we can get onto the ground with our black test lead. And then we can check the com incoming black wire, 120 volts there. Check the incoming red wire, 120 volts. And then we can also go from neutral. We would expect to see the same thing from neutral to hot black, 120 volts. Red to neutral, 120 volts. Now across the two hot conductors coming in, we should see or 240 volts. So again, that feeds through the black wire, feeds through one of the poles of this main breaker, and when that breaker's on, it turns on every other bus bar. 
So if we check any one of these bus bars, they should each have 120 volts on each one of them. Try to get my hand out of the way. 120 volts on that one. 120 volts on that one. And on you go up the ladder. But pick any two adjacent bus bars and you're going to see 240 volts. So here we are back inside the branch circuit compartment. And as I said, when that main breaker is on, all these bus bars are live. Every other one is connected to the black and the other opposite ones are connected to the red. But adjacent, you'll find 240 volts on them. So let's get my meter in the shot here. Going to neutral with my black lead and check a bus bar. That one's got 120 on it. That one's got 120 on it. But check two adjacent bus bars and you'll see 240 volts. And there you got 240 volts. Okay, so that's inside the main panel, the belly of the beast. Remember, so important, don't open up that main breaker compartment. That's not yours. You shut that main off. You can work inside of here if you would like to. And that is your branch circuits where all the bus bars are dead once you shut off that main breaker. So that's pretty cool, right? Nothing to be afraid of at all. If you use the precautions that I outlined for you, mainly shut off that main breaker if you're going to open up the branch circuit compartment. So now what I want you to do is go find your main breaker box or main service panel in your home. Identify all the parts we learned about. Which is the main breaker? What are the branch circuit breakers? Are they properly labeled? Maybe test a few, make sure they are labeled correctly. And if they're not labeled, now's a good time to do that. So if you like this video and you learned something about what really is the heart of the home's electrical system, I've got some good news for you. In my upcoming course, Weekend Wiring Warrior, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about your home's electrical system, from how the power is generated, transmitted, transformed, and then enters your home via that main service entrance panel, right down to all the end devices like switches, receptacles, light fixtures, and more. The course is going to launch in a few days, so keep watching because you don't want to miss it. This is going to be the best and most comprehensive training I've ever released, and it contains everything I can teach you about home wiring mastery but you must get on that early bird waiting list soon to take advantage of this training. The link to join is below this video. So in my next video, I'm going to show you the complete plan that you need to follow to achieve home wiring mastery. I'm going to reveal every step that you have to take. You don't want to miss that video because I will literally share the complete game plan with you. So thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you there.